Fermenting vessels come in all different shapes, sizes, and varieties. So which one's best? And what do you need to think about when you're using different vessels? Today, we're gonna to be covering some of the top ones and what to look for. Hey, my name is Carolyn from Homesteading Family, where we talk about your health, freedom, and security. So if you're interested in living a more self-sufficient lifestyle, make sure you click the subscribe button below so that you don't miss any of our videos. Fermenting is really making a comeback as a preservation method. And that makes me really excited because it's one of the few preservation methods that actually makes your food healthier and more nutrient dense. I think everybody should start fermenting if they haven't been fermenting. For quite a few years, fermenting has really just been about fancy condiments that maybe you keep in the refrigerator. Um, but now it's making a solid comeback as a very, very effective form of food preservation. But there's a lot of equipment that goes with fermenting, or at least there's a lot of different options for different vessels that go with fermenting. So today we're talking about a few of them. Now your good old standard is just a glass mason jar, and these absolutely work. They work really, really well. Um, make sure that you're generally working with a wide mouth jar. This is important because you wanna be able to get things in and out. And having that small mouth is really, really challenging to get your hand into. So work with a wide mouth. One really important accessory for fermenting uh, in a mason jar is a jar weight. Now this is gonna save you a lot of frustration. You don't need this. You can go really, really basic and just use a jar. But if you have a fermentation weight, what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to settle in right on top of your fermented foods and help keep the foods underneath the liquid level, which is super, super important in fermenting. You don't need an airlock to ferment vegetables safely and easily. You do not need them, but you can get them. They don't hurt anything. Okay, now let's look at some of the other options. Now, historically, we have seen a lot of crocs. And a crock like this is just a really good piece of pottery. You can see here, it's nicely glazed on the inside and there are absolutely no cracks in it. And that's really important. When it comes to crocs, it's really important to make sure that you have a really good food safe crock. Sometimes the glazes on the outside of old crocs were food safe, but the um, ceramics on the inside were not so food safe. So you just really need to make sure that you know that you're working with a food safe crock. Sometimes the newer crocks are the better way to go because you know what you're working with. And you wanna be sure that you don't have any cracks that are gonna allow your liquid to leak out. Now it's a very normal to get very fine cracks in the actual surface of the glaze, and that's usually just fine as long as your uh, crock is actually holding liquid just fine. You can get stones, which are weights, kind of the, uh, the same idea as this kind of a weight that sit right on top and hold your ferment under the brine level. It is so helpful. I really recommend that you go ahead and get those. And you can get the lids that go on there to help keep evaporation to a minimum. This is a great way to go, but they are pretty heavy and they're not inexpensive. I'll put links down below for where you can find any of these. Now, another historical method that was used a lot, and I love this method, is a wooden barrel. Now, you can still get these today. This is not a thing of the past, and it has a really exciting element to it, and that is a lot of them are toasted on the inside and that adds flavor. This actually adds a phenomenal flavor when you first ferment your vegetables, and it's a lot of fun. It's a really good way to go. The downside of this, 
These wooden barrels are kind of a pain to take care of. They're a little bit fussy. They have a tendency to shrink, and so you have to soak them in water to swell them. And if they have any period of inactivity or they get any mold in them, you have to sterilize them. And that's kind of hard to do with a wooden barrel. Usually you have to bring in a chemical component to that, like a Camden tablet or something like that, just to make sure that you're gonna have a successful ferment by starting off um, you know, with a clean item. But these are a lot of fun and they make a real statement in the kitchen. And like I said, they add a really nice flavor. Now, here is another option that I have just fallen in love with is I actually use these as often as I can. Right now, we've already eaten through a lot of our fermented foods, so we've got several that are empty. And this is a old Chinese design for an airlock container. This is a glass one. You can also get them in ceramic. What I love about this is the shape of this bowl means that you can stuff a lot in there, but the way it narrows down up here means that it helps to keep everything underneath the surface of the liquid. It also has a built-in airlock system. When I put the lid right on the top, I just have to add water right in this trough and it has an automatic airlock. I love this system. It's worked really, really well for me. Unfortunately though, I can't find any American distributors of this product except for going through Amazon. So I'll put the links down. Um, last I saw they were all out, but I'll put them for you down there just in case they come back in. But Bottom line, you guys, make sure anything you use for your fermenting vessels is food safe. Make sure there's no lead involved. That's not gonna make you any healthier. Also, make sure that you can sterilize the item altogether. All of these things can be sterilized, but some are a lot easier than others. I prefer to sterilize things in just boiling water for 12 minutes. That does a great job without any chemicals. But if you want to start fermenting foods and have them last on your shelf for long periods of time, then you'll need to start with a sterilized container. That's gonna get you the best bet of having this last you for months and months on in on your kitchen counter or in your cabinet. I really, really hope you're gonna start fermenting. You guys, check out this video right here on a ferment that even your pickiest fermenting eaters will love.